Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor, um, friends and family of James Keogh's family, fellow councillors, Councillor Joyce Barman, who's the District Assembly Chair. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming today. Um, welcome to the unveiling of the 80th blue plaque. I can't believe it, eight here in, in Termside. And this is in honour of James Keogh, who was nominated by the Termside Trade Union Council. Um, it's a great honour to pay tribute to James. Uh, he died in the International Brigade in the Spain Civil War. And it's just great to have so many people here to actually recognise what he did and to join us in celebrating his life. I just want to say thanks for that. James was born at 105 Wellington Street in Ashton on the 9th of April 1915. He attended Gatefield Junior School and Christ Church. Uh, he then went on to become, uh, become an apprentice at Pikes Taylors on Stamford Street. I don't remember that, I'm sure some of you do. Christy is nodding at me, so I'm going to tell them where it was after. Uh, and James set off for Spain in May 1937 after telling his parents bit like us. Uh, he was going for a job, job interview at Taylor's in Leeds, not much difference. Mm -hmm. uh, the Spanish Civil War was actually one of the central events of the 20th century, a war that actually killed almost 10,000 members uh, of the International Brigade, with another 7,000 that was injured. So I think us in terms of, we're so proud that uh, we can recognise this sacrifice, and especially that of James, who, who came from Ashton, who came from Townside. James actually died in action on the 17th of March, 1938, in the province of Aragon, fighting for freedom for us and, and democracy, and he was just 22 years old. It now just gives me, sorry, it just gets that, doesn't it, 20 years, 22 years old. It now just gives me great pleasure to hand over to James's nephew, Mark, who's going to give us a few words. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, um, I've been asked to say a few words about the uh, event today, and uh, as you just heard, uh, I am James Keogh's nephew. Um, I'd like to say a few things about him. I never knew him personally, as of course he was cut down in his prime trying to stem the tide of fascism in Spain. I know of him from the stories told by my family. And I think perhaps to understand him better, we have to cast our minds back to the 1930s. The Wall Street crash has happened in October 1929. And in Europe, the collapse of the Austrian bank, the Credit Amstelt, in 1931, that turned a recession into a depression. This also resulted in the strengthening of the anti-democratic, fascist and Nazi movement in Austria and Germany. And of course, Benito Mussolini had been in power in Italy since 1922. And then, in 1936, fascism raised its ugly head in Spain and both Hitler and Mussolini had pledged support to Franco. Mm -hmm. So in 1936, James was 21 years old, a young man from a working class family who made a living from tailoring. He wasn't a member of a political party, and yet he and others from the borough set off for Spain a year later to fight fascism with the international brigades. May have seemed like quite an adventure, but it wasn't going to be a picnic. So why would an inconspicuous young man like James join in somebody else's war? I believe that he hated fascism having witnessed an Italian fascist state, and then in 1933, Hitler was appointed as Chancellor of Germany. He must have felt it was now time to do his bit to stop the spread of fascism and preserve democracy in Europe. He was a very confident young man who rode home from Spain. The government troops, along with the internationals, are going to very soon drive the fascists out of Spain for good. We have up-to-date tanks, machine guns, etc., and a huge air force that can stand against the enemy. Well, James armed himself with knowledge, much of which he obtained at this library, and he grew in confidence as a result. 
It is therefore fitting that the blue plaque be placed here. And having uh, taken a great interest in the events of his day, he saw the danger from another European country becoming a fascist state. He felt that the time for action had arrived, but he had to keep his decision quiet from his family, who only found out what he intended to do when they received a postcard from Marseille. <laughs> That's where he was to board the ship known as the Ciudad de Barcelona, the city of Barcelona, bound for Valencia. James's first taste of war came when the ship was torpedoed and sunk by the nationalist submarine General San Giorgio off the coast of Catalonia near Malgrat. More than a hundred volunteers perished in the attack and the survivors had to swim ashore at Malgrat where they were offered assistance by the local people. And then James' war came to an end in March 1938 near a town called Calisati in Aragon when his column ran into Italian tanks and troops. I visited Calisati in 2007 but could not find any graves for the fallen of the international brigades. There were many British casualties in Spain and their valiant struggle could not prevent Franco from taking power. The rest, as they say, is history. I see this blue plaque as a testimony to the courage of the brave volunteers from this borough and I would hope that it will also serve as a beacon to all that there are brave men and women who will stand up to defend freedom and democracy, as did so many more when World War II broke out in 1939. I personally don't think that we're finished with fascism and we should always be on our guard. And perhaps we should remind ourselves just what fascism is and what better authority than Mussolini to tell us. He said, fascism should more appropriately be called corporatism because it is a merger of state and corporate power. James and the other volunteers understood that danger and I am very pleased that their sacrifice is now being recognised. i quite emotional. Excuse me. <laughs> I would also like to thank all those who made today possible. Your hard work and your desire to see just recognition for the sacrifice made by others is a credit to you. Although the Spanish Civil War took place more than 70 years ago, it isn't something that should be confined to the history books, but rather be a reminder of the many dangers that could threaten our way of life. Let this blue plaque be another testimony to the bravery of the people of Ashton and the wider borough. Thank you. Thank you. hand over to Brian Bamford from the Thameside to you soon. <laughs> James Keogh, born 1915, the humble son of a local dustman. On this day, long forgotten in the realm of public knowledge, James Keogh is about to become high Un giganto entre las pygmeos. Today, James becomes a giant among pygmies. Same side TUC believes that, like Thomas Hardy's drummer Hodge in the Boer War, James Keel of Ashton on the Line in the Spanish Civil War, still as yet unfound, was thrown to rest, uncoffined in the ground. Left just as found, somewhere in the hard hills and mountains, in the bitter landscape of Aragon. Out there in the far north of Spain, as Thomas Hardy might say, James Keogh's homely northern breast and brain grow to some southern tree, and strange constellations reign his stars eternally. I came across the poem of Drummer Hodge on a wet weekend in the English Lake District last August. I saw it on a DVD of Alan Bennett's The History Boys. In that film, the tutor Hector, in a tutorial with a student, tells him that before the Boer War, we wouldn't even have known 
the name of Drummer Hodge. He would, like millions before him, have disappeared off the historical radar as an unknown soldier. Thus so, it would have been that Drummer Hodge and James Keogh's names and identities were lost forever on some foreign field. Two years ago, in 2009, James Keogh's sister, Claire Jackson, who passionately supported this application and who sadly died earlier this year, told me that after all these years, and now at last, people are talking about James. James Keogh was unaffiliated, uncoffined in the ground, and until this day, uncommemorated. James Keogh, the tailor's apprentice, who used this very library to study, was unaffiliated without a party or even a trade union. James Keogh, the soldier of the International Brigade in the Spanish Civil War, was laid uncoffined in the ground. And James, until now, was uncommemorated. But in Spain, he will forever be part of what they call la memoria historica, part of the historical memory of Spain. This here booklet that commemorates this unveiling of the blue plaque for James Keogh, this publication by Thames ITUC is simply a rem rendering just an impressionistic account of James Keogh and his in intervention in the Spanish Civil War. The artist's impression on the front is by the Guardian art artist Clifford Harper. He told me that the hills in the background could be seen to represent either the Pyrenees of the Iberian Peninsula in the north of Aragon where James fell or we could see them as our very old penny, Pennine chains over yonder hill where James lived. Now I'm not an historian, I'm an electrician. My background is sociology and anthropology. Also, history itself is not an exact science, it is not a natural science, nor should it pretend to be so. In the History Boys, the Yorkshire playwright Alan Bennett, as one student say, Sir, if I may speak plainly, history is just one fucking thing after another. <laughs> so my health warning here is that this here booklet from Thameside TUC is merely a narrative, a rendering by me and Mike Harrison of what we see as James Keogh's contribution in the Spanish War. Based on his letters to his mum, and to his brothers, and the old newspaper clipping, and the information gathered from the Q Records Office, the MI5 files, and the Moscow archives. It is not going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. It is certainly not going to be the last word on James Keogh. Indeed, if I, this is going to be the genesis, the kickoff, the starting gun, because on unveiling this blue plaque, Teamside NBC is leading the way, setting the trend for other towns in Greater Manchester. It's going to be the Alpha rather than the Omega. And yet, I predict, this is certainly not going to be the last word on Jimmy Keogh. What we both have here, what we have here, is the story of, of James Keogh is both sublime and ridiculous in the attempts to, to blacken James by certain people. The tension between the working class mother and her son is so typical of our northern culture. We can instantly recognise this kind of thing in our own lives and our own family experiences. The letters here in show a thirst for news from home and the love and approval of his family, especially of his mum. Nobody will understand this better than a Spaniard. For we see this also in the poems of the Spanish Civil War poet Miguel, Miguel Hernandez. 
Miguel Hernandez, who was born in the region of Valencia, works as a gold herder and was self-taught like James Keogh. Unlike James, Hernandez survived the war, but, but was captured and died in, in the prison hospital in Alicante, near, near what is now the Costa Blanca, not far from, from, not far from tourist Benidorm. Carlos Figueroa of the Spanish Trade Union, the, gen, the General Confederation of La Labour, sent me one of his poems, especially for this event. It is about the mother-son relationship in which Hernandez told in a letter from his wife that she was surviving only on onions of bread, replied in, a, in the poem Lullaby of the Onion. And this is it. My little boy was in Unger's cradle. He was nursed on onion blood, but your blood is frosted with sugar, onion, and hunger. I woke up from childhood. Don't you be waking up, for I have a frown. Keep to your cradle, defending laughter, feather by feather. Fly away, son, on the double moon of the breast. It is saddened by onion. You are satisfied. Don't let go. Don't find out what is happening or what's going on. The tragedy of James Keogh and Miguel Hernandez was our tragedy. The tragedy of becoming adults, of growing up and of knowing too much about the world. I'll just hand you over to... Okay. <coughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just before we do the unveiling, um, I just want to say some thank yous. That's thank you to you all. Thank you to Madam Mayor and fellow councillors. But most of all, thank you to James's family who have travelled today from Southport and France and from all over the place. So we're really thankful for that. Thankful to Brian for his passion. To our, to our history forum, uh, we're here today, we're always passionate about it, but a special thank you to Christine and to Alan and, and to everybody uh, who, who has made this possible. But a massive thank you goes to our arts and events team, to Leanne, but a special thank you goes to Karen, yeah. uh, who's actually done all the hard work behind this today. And this is Karen's last event because she's going to be moving on. I just want to say a special thank you to her to that and to wish her every blessing and every, um, for the future. Yeah. Thank you. Right, Madam Mayor. Am I on this side? Oh, you'll have to grab all bits of tape. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'll give you the song after. Yeah. <laughs> just want to say now, it gives us great pleasure. Okay, it's all down to the Yeah. Stay where you are, man. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, we need